can't see says you can do it. You can do it. But well, look at the inside, man. But, oh man, the, the, you got to remind me to take the coat crazy. off. That's crazy. Now, it, but you, it, you said a guy from Estonia. The, Estonia. My friend Dmitri. And that, that, does he live in Los Estonia. Angeles? Yeah. He lives in Estonia. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. It's great. It's better for kids, safer for kids, I think, than living in LA. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a that? lot of places safer for kids than living in LA. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you, that, that's one of my favorite jokes. You know, it's dangerous having the kids go to public school in California. You know, in the morning you drop off a girl, in the afternoon you pick up a boy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. I like how quick that is, because that's like, that's like Rodney, you know. So, hey, baby, you're all right. You're okay. Hey. So, I love jokes that, I, you know, you, you have your favorite comedians. You got Leno and you got Seinfeld. You had to make jokes about. You know, and they got Chris Rock, of course, the genius, and then the Dave Chappelle's, the Bill Burr's. So these are guys, there's so many great ones now. That's the blessing of, thankfully, to your beautiful comedy club. Oh, thanks, man. Not only beautiful, but I'm telling you, it's just one of the best places, honestly, in the world to do stand-up. That's why, like, their theaters are fun, and Mike and I were talking about it. Like, you can do theaters, and theaters are great, and I appreciate it, and it's a real performance. But to really work on material and just push you and just the electricity when it's hot, like tonight... And that first show was amazing, but the, the second show was like electric. And it's fun, but you can't get that. Well, you know, as I, I tell people, I go, you know, uh, and a lot of people go, well, how do you get the robs? How do you get, and I go, look, if they're working on something, especially if you're working on uh, something that's going to be on television or whatever, yeah. the, in a theater, as you know, and people yeah. don't know this, in a theater that's 2,000 seats, 5,000, I go, you, you deliver a punch and you got to wait. You gotta wait. Your timing's all the fuck difference. You gotta wait for the. But in here, it's Charge. like it's it's Charge. snap. It just comes right at you. By the time you, it's starting to die down, jump, like, <laughs> jump, and just keep jumping. Just I, you know what the cool thing is? Is I really like about this because it's dark enough for everybody can laugh at my my you know t- you know the terrible horrible things I'm saying. But you don't say any terrible I know, I know, horrible but some, that's, shit. You talk to Canada and see what they say. But the, uh, <laughs> It's the first time I've ever talked and to And the people. Canadians are generally pretty nice people, but... Yeah, they are. They didn't like your... They, they, no, they're too nice to like the only, This is the first place I ever talked about getting kicked out of a country, getting kicked out of Canada. Oh, really? It's the only place I've ever talked about it. I you, never talked about it before. I didn't even know I was going to do it until, the, until last night. I said, you know, I should just talk about it. And that's what this club gives you. Right. Kind of gives you the confidence to like, go a little farther. Go a little farther. We're right. here for you. Right. And that's that's an incredible gift. I tell you, I, I love... Uh, I, uh, well, and, I, and, and I, I'll say... I, I'm so uh, pleased. I hear that from so many comedians, <laughs> yeah. especially celebrities, that go, your crowds sit and pay attention and listen yeah. like you're doing a theater piece. You know what I mean? Right. They really that's, they really focus on what well, that's you're what t- I'm doing. I'm doing a theater piece. But to me, it's like it's like I have like four or five minute bits. Sometimes there's like a 10 minute bit. And there's like it's just performance pieces. But it's stand up. Yes. Yeah. Performance theater, theater. I don't know what it's like, but it's just, it has a beginning, middle, of an end to this bit. And it's a performance and you can act it out. And Correct. that's me. It's like, because this great monologist says, and I'm never going to be Norm MacDonald. I'm never going to be Dave Chappelle or Chris Rock. But that, but I act out these bits. Well, and I can be you're these you, characters. you know. Yeah. But, but, so I said, that's my strength is performing and acting. Right. So I do that and then act out a whole bit and play all the characters. And I said, well, that's, that's why I've really kind of zoned in on for this this tour uh-huh. is going to really push it and then do like this crazy you know this is the craziest show I've ever had well you know is is like we were talking about last night you know here you came in this time and, and, and uh, there, there was a little there was a, let's just say there was a little bit of baggage uh, you come well it's not baggage but it's just like there was an expectation and I, I and I told you and I was like you know people were like, ah. and I was like well it's Rob's fans they're, you know, they sold out six shows. We could have sold out eight shows. Yeah. And it's your fans. But the thing about it is, I said last night, I said, everybody's <laughs> coming in here waiting for something in your show for the damn shoe to drop, for this moment that's going to be like the oh God moment. And there isn't an oh God when you, moment. What you happens know, is this, our, fun. Cu- our yeah. culture zooms in on whatever crazy yeah. right. tragedy, whatever crazy drama, whatever, you know, and it just zones in on it. And it, the spectacle of what the what the media and social media and the tech companies and how fast it is and how big it can be and it's like it's nuts. So um yeah, I felt that last night. I was nervous just in my about like well, everybody's looking at me like, What the hell is gonna happen tonight? Is that, is that what's gonna happen? And then it's almost like 
They left and went, well, fuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't do anything to piss anybody yeah. off. Yeah. Really? The first, <laughs> but then tonight something did happen. On the first show. The first show tonight, what they were looking for did happen tonight. Yep. Yeah, we had one, one. And the thing about it was, uh, Marcella, my, my manager, she Some said. Some guy lost his shit in the middle he, of the he, show. He, 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 he lost was, his kind shit. kind of yelled, hey, and da, 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 and then y'all, and you playfully very playfully have but she goes you know as he was leaving you should show a clip of this while on the podcast oh yeah but you know she said as he was leaving she said he wasn't he wasn't like pissed off leaving he when he got into the green room she said he wasn't like pissed off he's like eh, you know not my cup of tea <laughs> you know kind of yeah. but it, and i mean rob we've had people leave here fucking I mean, screaming all the way out the fucking door. And I mean, we've yeah. had, oh, you can imagine over the years. Yeah. Uh, 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 most of the time, it's not for what something the comedian's done, is because they've been talking and loud and they've been an asshole and we've been, and we're throwing them the fuck out and they're yeah. just going nuts. But, yeah, but like I say, you had that moment with that one person, but one person yeah. out of, but, I mean, it's, it's like, I, I tell at the end of a, a week like this, eighteen hundred people, two thousand people come through, whatever the fuck it is, and um, and we'll sit down on Monday, and sometimes Marcella, she's a showroom man, she has to deal with all this shit, yeah. and she, you know, like, and not talking about your show, but just an average show, and she go, ah, oh, fuck, it. she'll talk about the, <laughs> the 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 twelve people she had to throw out, and I go, out of eighteen hundred, <laughs> I go, I'm amazed it wasn't a hundred. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, you yeah. know the really yeah. human beings. Look, yeah, right. look, I am a traditional liberal, but and I will tell you that the liberals are more sensitive. Like you don't have a conservative guy, you know, screaming and yelling at a comedian, but no. a, but there's a guy who's a Democrat who will do it. Like he he lost his shit. He lost his shit, and um, it's my job to like look. I'm not attacking anybody. I'm telling jokes. However, the difference is we talk about it in my book. You know, you can do it. Speak your mind, this America. Book? You got to say, speak your mind, America. It's a free speech book. All you say is you can do it. Say what it is. Speak your mind. It's a book on free oh, speech. Okay, I've never read a book I know, before, I, so I don't know which well, part is possible. That's, you know, it is important. <laughs> but you know, it's a free speech. Book. Right. You no, never, but, but you, but you didn't ever, but you never attack the guy. Well, the, you, my, you did my it job, in a very playful way. Well, my right. job is yeah. you like just, just talk to him, explain to him why the, the idea of free speech. You know, the idea of this book that you didn't. Mentioned. But I swear I'm going to do better tomorrow. <laughs> uh, uh, I didn't realize that I was going to be scolded on the podcast. <laughs> you That's had, why you're here. We could have done this That's in why private, you're here. Rob. Be scolded <laughs> in public. That's you could have told you're... me how much I was failing, like, you know, alone later. Dude, you, know? you murdered tonight. That second show, you murdered. Okay, you just worked your way back in. Now, no, now no, we're no. friends again. Dude, That's I got to right. say that I didn't never heard that... Uh, uh, linoleum. Oh, really? And uh, what's the other one? I don't even really want to talk about it because I'm so embarrassed <laughs> about how dumb the joke is. I, I no, love it's that good. joke. It, it is, is no, but, yeah. So, uh, but but the thing is about it was I will say that like Republicans, it could just I should say because conservatives and tradition liberals, they get liberals get you know that they get angrier and they get, they're more sensitive for sure. I mean that's what they got no right. Saturday Night Live for sure. Whereas conservatives just kind of have to sit there and just kind of eat it and go, yeah, all right. Right. We, two you, thirds of Americans don't feel like they could say, two thirds of Americans, according to the Cato Institute, are afraid to say what they how they really feel out of fear. Is that Cato from causing, the green of the Green Hornet Cato? <laughs> they, it's an institute. I don't know. What, <laughs> I don't know. What it it's is. in my friend, my friend Andrew Doyle's book. But he said two thirds of uh, Americans are afraid to speak their mind out of fear of of uh, making somebody. Making people uh, uncomfortable, upset, you know, upset, upset. Yeah, you know, is uh, 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 I had a most wonderful situation like that was there's a guy that I play golf with, and I met him up in New York at the yeah. uh, uh, Oak Hill Golf, which is one of the most yeah, fantastic, yeah. right? And he's he was the club champion there several times, and da da. And so he's down here in the winters, and we got through playing golf, and we've been we've been friends, but we've never taught politics. I mean, it just never came up. Yeah. And we were sitting there, and you know, and I, if liberal, I I probably as skew a little more that way. And he goes, uh, so we were sitting there having a beer, and he mentioned something about Trump, and I just went, nah, I'm not a fan. You know, just me. I'm just not a fan. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, really? And and I go, nah, you know. And then he starts, you know, talking about, well, here's what I like about the guy. And then I was like, well, I see where you're coming from. And we sat there and had this beautiful yeah. back and forth. 
you know, just a beautiful conversation back and forth, <laughs> you know, and we finished and we walked out and he goes, you know, I've never had a conversation like that that went well. Yeah. You know what I mean? I but never you, have. He said, uh, whenever that ha has happened, it's ended up being, mm -hmm. you know, strained. He goes, me and you finished that conversation. Respectfully. And I like you better than I did no, before. Well, that's what happened. Why can't Congress do that? Well, that's what he said. 2016 you know? yeah. was a real change. And it started up really under the Obama administration. I know it's around 2013, where, where suddenly disagreement wasn't just you had a disagreement. If you disagreed with somebody, had a different opinion, you were a bad person. So there's some sort of judgment on disagreement. There was a, uh, a judgment about somebody's morality or lack of lack thereof. And that was a, that was a, a different uh, Rubicon that we seemed to pass. And then it just kept going and going and going where suddenly, you know, to, you know, you just say the word deplorables and everybody knows what you're talking about. Well, here's here's something that I, I wonder about, you know, is I go that, that hits me on this whole whole, you know, divisiveness on one end. The other. Mm -hmm. I think that if I really look at it, I think that. If I talk to uh, someone who's leaning on the conservative side, whatever, yeah. and there's somebody who's leaning on the liberal side, each side thinks that the other side is going <laughs> to take away I freedom. Know. Well, that's such a lie. They both they do. They finally stopped they saying They both it. think that. I know. And I go, well, what, what's the freedom that you think? I know, I know. Well, they, 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 look, they, this country's going to survive no matter who wins this time, I will say. Oh God, that of course, they there will. are some some you know if if you know if if uh, you know the Democrats had their druthers, you know wanting to put twenty seven people on the Supreme Court would would alt would would uh, have it or or had term limits would uh, they'll never get that, but that would uh, fundamentally have an impact. I don't know what 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 impact, but the idea of the United States is this, you know, incredible experiment in freedom. It's, it's something that we have to be, uh, you know, as they say, you have to be diligent about because sure. it, otherwise it, it is very possible that it could just be this. When you have 108 billion people in the history of the world, most of them did not live with this thing called freedom of speech. Most. You know, in 18, <laughs> Almost all. Yeah, in 90, yeah, very few, yeah. but a very select group of people. That have had it in 1891. The uh, Mike, shut the fuck up. Yeah, you guys, I'm really sorry. I'm, I'm capitalizing the conversation. I was going to ask you can crop me out of the shot, right? <laughs> so it'll just be Rob. 18, 1791, Declaration of Man and the end of the Declaration of Man and of the Citizen was the free speech for the of, of in, in France, and it lasted for three years. Our Constitution has lasted. Are the free speech and our First Amendment rights have lasted since. 1791. That's exactly right. It is the beacon of hope around the world, free speech. Absolutely. And I and I love what you say, and I've said it forever. Ignore freedom of speech, and this has been said a million times, you know, of yeah. course. But you go, you go, there, who the, f you said it tonight, who the fuck gets to say what is the right thing to say? Yeah. The government? <laughs> you want them saying to, who yeah. gets to say? You don't want, you have to let it all be out there, yeah. all of it. And then you know, shake it out. Yeah, no, you it has know, to be. I mean, you know, it, you don't get smooth from smooth. You get smooth from friction, and you got to have the best ideas and worst ideas, and see which rises to the top. So. Well, you know, I think that you know, obviously, states' rights was a huge thing that 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 you know, that they in the beginning going. This country's so fucking vast well, it's and so no, big. It was more than just that, though. But they, you know. they weren't thinking about like the size of the country at that particular time. What they were thinking about, what James Madison wanted to do, was have a a, a form of government because he looked at all of them that existed at that time and he took it all back and read them all <coughs> and he wanted to find something that didn't have the same potential for abuse that a democracy has a democracy is the tyranny of the majority and so by breaking it up into a republic um, it at least it, it limits what the fed, federal government can do and its powers and it's designed specifically for that so that's what's really interesting about America and why I think this system is so beautiful and so incredible. It's not perfect, but um, it is a good system. The state's rights, and you saw it during COVID. Sure, and we saw what happened to this state, which was open. What, how was your state during COVID, Wisconsin? It was pretty closed up. Like, I, and I'll be real honest with you, I didn't know the difference between Democratic 
and Republican <laughs> before COVID. Really? And when all of a sudden my kids were being forced to wear masks, and then I started focusing on what was happening, yeah. and I realized yeah. that it was the left. So I only became sort, and I'm not even really political, but it's very recent because I always chose to just stay out of it because <laughs> it seems very divisive and everyone argues about it. But right. but during COVID, I was forced forced to forget, and it affected it my affect job. And, Believe it or not, it could affect my work. I don't know if it will. Well, you know that <laughs> we were we, down here. You know, the the arc of it for us here in the theater was was that you know it hit in March, boom, down, yeah, everything yeah. down, right? Yeah. And then you're, you're and then everybody's like, what the fuck? What the fuck is this? What's happening? You know? Yeah. And then by about July, we're going. Uh, that's when I sat down with my landlord and went, "Hey, man, this this is a real deal. Yeah. I, I th this is serious." And I don't know how fucking long it's going to last. I don't know if it's going to last a year or five. I don't know. I don't fucking, I truly yeah. don't know. And and so by September of that year, I think it was September, that DeSanta said, hey, here's what we're going to do down here. I'm going to let you guys decide. Yeah, I'm going to let y'all decide. If you want to open, open. If you don't want to open, no, don't open. I if love you want to wear a mask, that. wear a mask. If you don't want to wear a mask, don't wear a I mean, I'm going to leave it kind of up to you. No, that's and right. So uh, at indi that point, Individual freedom. Right. Individual so, risk. So at that point, we were like, should we open now? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, it's still in the beginning stage my, my cousin's a doctor and mm -hmm. so i talked to bill about it from the very beginning and he was he was like well here's what i can tell you is first there's a lot we don't know secondly uh this is not a common cold it's something different we don't know what it is so we're gonna err mm -hmm. to being more cautious that's just yeah. the general deal the other thing is uh, we won't know really what all this is until about 10 years after it's all over. We, no, re we really won't out. know. The impact of closing And he goes, and, and you're definitely getting a lot of information that's probably not very precise. Well, exactly. You Most know, because the, nobody fucking well, but, knows. But, but, but the, 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 the government was just yeah lying out their ass and saying that what for sure stuff when they didn't know. And more, I, I'm going to say... They knew that they didn't know, but they lied anyway for a narrative. And, and I think was, that really pissed off. I mean, that was good because it woke up a lot of people. Well, I think from his point of view, it was kind of like we're airing, they're erring towards being more, way more cautious because yeah, they're not, because they don't know. But I just say that September, we're like, okay, I don't want to be part of the problem. So let's see. So then by November, we were like, okay, let's try this. Let's open. Let's open. Let's open. Let's just try to do one show Friday, one show Saturday. Let's just see how it goes. Let's do one show Friday, one show Saturday. And here's what we will do. I'll spend the $5,000 on the air conditioning system and put in the shit that really cleans the fuck out of it. Yeah, yeah. And I'll tell people that. And I'll tell them, you know, for the comfort of everybody, mask while moving, but otherwise, once you're in right. here, you can take a fucking Because you're laughing and you're eating and drinking. No, but what I, what and I think people... But but I just want to say that we we kind of did that a few of those things and then we opened and here's what I found was we couldn't get people in oh yeah yeah people still scared they were scared the yeah. thing was even though this was an open state and 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 I thought I mean me and Pam we we tried this experience I said we're gonna try it for eight weeks no matter what fucking happens we're gonna try to do shows for eight weeks to let it build and in, and in eight weeks after a, a New Year's Eve which we ended up having a show with about 75 people or whatever mm -hmm. we went ahead and just said okay they're not ready yet. <laughs> they're not ready they're just not ready and uh, to, to to come out yet it, and, and uh, so even at what though it was an open state people were still yeah. still Still fear because I thought I told Pam I go hell I think there's enough deniers out there to fucking fill the room up right, that's right, what right. I would have thought yeah. but there there wasn't people were still fearful of it and then we closed and but then by a, I think it was you know by the summer by about June yeah they were ready they were ready, they were ready. It's like, and like it for, started to come back what I yeah. learned about it too is like um, people weren't ready for some of the stuff that I was talking about yeah and uh, absolutely absolutely but i think though now they didn't know how to feel yet but at the same time like you know they're the great comedians and like sarah silverman is I, we, we're not the same on the same political side of the fence but she's a brilliant comedian yeah, absolutely and you can learn from everybody and i would just say like forget about political 
leanings. You look at somebody that's that brilliant and see her, how she gets to horrible, horrible things she's about to say, but she gets the audience on board beforehand, disarmingly then. And I learned from her, and I'm like, well, that's how you do it. Well, that's, and, and I will say again, that's what you do. And that's the thing we talked about was that, uh, we've talked about this over podcasts and stuff, was yeah. that, you know, if a comic's coming in and saying they're doing a stand-up comedy show, they then they should do a stand-up comedy show. And to me, to me, the <laughs> definition of a stand-up comedy show is I am <laughs> going to try to make you laugh as many times as I fucking possibly can. Yeah. That's my goal. Yeah. My goal is is that you come in here and laugh as much. Every chance I get to make you yeah. laugh, I'm going to try to do it. Yeah. Then there's another show that stand-up comics are doing which is not that. That is, I am trying to get a point of view across, and I'm still going to make you laugh, and I'm going to use humor to get my point across, but my main thing is to get my point of view across. And watching your show, you, I thought your main focus was make sure these people oh, have yeah, a great yeah. time. If anything... And, and, and you did. Thank you. you. Know. If anything, I'm just using those subjects to get them to laugh harder and to push them so that they think I'm going to be serious, but I'm not, or right. I'm not, or I'm talking about something serious to get to a really good joke or something like that. I mean, I mean, it's the best time ever to do comedy in my life because of the potential problems. Those like, those are all just opportunities. So I pretend I'm going to be really serious about this and that, and I'm not. You know, that's fun. Yeah. That, and then I say, no, I'm going to be serious about this, and then I'm not. And there's no about this one. I'm really, and then there, and then I got a little well, that bit. Was, and then that was the problem with the guy that got upset. Had he stayed. Perhaps by the end of that bit, he would have been on your side. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. But he didn't let you finish the bit. You were still in the setup portion. You know, he didn't it let was you interesting, it. right? Yeah, there's some guy. When, you got to explain what happened. Some guy got upset when know. Trump. When Trump first went into office, was the first time I experienced something in all the years I've been producing comedy and yeah. comedy. That first six months. Oh yeah. If anybody, and it ha I think you were here, and it happened to you. I think it happened to Lovitz. I think it happened to Sinbad. It was like. Y'all went into something political and the crowd was like, no politics, no politics. And we had people yelling out, no politics. No, yeah, like they that. just like, uh, and I think a lot of it was a feeling that you were going to slam Trump, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. but the, but the point being was, and, and I think all, almost all of y'all did it. You all stepped back and went, Hey, why don't you wait till I finish this fucking bit? Yeah, you know, yeah. cause you might find that I might play both sides of the coin. I'm, you don't know where I'm even well, going thing, yet. I just yeah. thought, like, you know, they can see all the, the jokes on Trump on TV and they don't need, they don't need to pay to see that for me. It's too easy. You know, I remember Norm Macdonald going, yeah, I see how hard is that? Everybody, <laughs> You didn't like the guy. And you just, you're telling him you don't like the guy. It's not, it's not hard. Why, you know, what's that? And so I always want to go against the grain. So, but here I'm trying to also, you know, because this is, these are conservative, wonderful people and a great audience here. But I want to give them, but I want to challenge them too. And also kind of explain where I'm coming from within the joke and then get to it. But it's really fun because this is the first place where like, because honestly, I didn't think I was going to do some of the stuff that I've been able to do here. So oh, thanks. cool. So the talking about Canada, like I don't ever want to tell people I got kicked out of a country. Right. And it's like, you know what, maybe I, maybe the places you don't want to go, right. that's where you need to go. Yeah. But I, I thought to myself, if I could do it anywhere, I said I'm going to do it at McCurdy's. That's awesome. Oh, that's awesome, yeah. man. Because cause I think that's what makes that whole piece work so well <laughs> yeah. is that you go – uh, I mean, it's right in the top of your show where you go, well, let, let me do something that got me kicked out of Canada, <laughs> you know, and it's yeah. like, and it's like it came in stages, you know, well, this is where I kind of pissed them off, yeah. and this is where they really... I got to watch the tape because I don't know, because I don't even yeah. know what I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just illustrated all the, you know, you'd go into the next joke, well, that, and that's another joke they didn't like in Canada. Right, it, it built, it was yeah. like, this is where they kind of kind of got annoyed with me oh, yeah. this is where they, yeah. you know this is and this is where they bought me a plane ticket to go yeah, fucking yeah. home you know at this yeah. point you well know? and the balls to start your show with 
jokes that literally got you kicked out of a country. <laughs> and the, the balls were, to just open with that. And I'm going to tell you, you. And these people don't I'm know what he's gonna going to do. They, I'm really surprised at that. I mean, Canada I is know. a country that has Second City and SCTV. And, you know, it's and changed. you would have thought... Wow. But they don't have the same freedom of speech we have. They never have. Well, I don't think Great Britain or anybody yeah. does. I mean, there's. I've heard this over the years, and I have not performed. I've performed in Canada, but I haven't performed in Great Britain or Australia or other places. And I've heard from comedians, they go, we don't, the crowds, we can say, we've got the ability to say what we want to say, but the crowds themselves won't accept the leeway that you have in the United States. Yeah, I would say so. I would agree. But at the same time, I think, um, no, you're right. But I think you just, you have to be really, that's you know, clever or it's the clever, but you just have to work a way that find another way in. Cause there's yeah. a lot of ways in. You just have to get them to come with you. And when they realize you're not attacked, when they realize you're making fun of yourself, that's Louis CK's genius. Yes. Is they think, you know, they're not attacking he gets them to question their own morality through his lack of morality. Yep. And then that's the genius of him. He says, well, I, you know, and then he's talking about himself. And then he gets to get to some interesting places. So I will say that, you know, with all deference to, to uh, uh, you know, to um, Jerry Seinfeld, who I, you know, was one of the great masters of all time. Sure. But he, um, I disagree with him that it's not a great time for comedy. I just think you have to, I mean, I'm doing a lot more shows than him, obviously. Uh -huh. He doesn't have to do as many shows. So, but I just think like for the shows, you just got to get there. And just push them a little bit. You just have to. It's a. It's your approach and the execution. Wouldn't you say? And I say yeah. And I say the people that come out to see comedy in general are more accepting of foreign ideas. Like they're not. You're yeah. not getting a lot of the uptight people going to see comedy because it's sort of becoming yeah. understood that when you watch comedy, you're going to hear some shit that you don't agree with. Yeah, you know? but, and that's that, part of it. That, yeah. Isn't that would, how bad would it be to not hear something? To hear everything you agree with everything. That right, right. Sense. I remember a, 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 a great comic has been around for years, yeah. a guy named Al April. One year, several years ago, we're sitting back here, and he goes, yeah, you know what comedy is going to be in the future? And he goes, it already kind of is. You know what it's really going to be in the future? He goes, it's going to be that place where you go to eat what you shouldn't eat, drink what you shouldn't drink, and hear what you shouldn't hear. That's great. Wow. You know, and I was like, hell yeah, man. Yeah. And then, you know, yeah. there's like, you know, like the child in you that goes, yeah, yeah that's the playground. Let me tell you, that was really tense for me on stage. I know I don't show it because I can, you know. Oh, with the guy that got angry? Yeah, but I was very tense. And I wish I would have thought of like um, saying, dude, you can go home and listen to the same stuff you want to hear, but you got to leave your house. You're going to hear stuff maybe you don't agree with. You know, so you always think I should have gone here or there, but. And I, I thought you handled it perfectly. I mean, I really do, Rob. You, 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 you didn't take any. You really did not take a defensive stance. You were so playful with it. You know, you told the guy. You were like, "Hey, man, I get it. It ain't your cup yeah. of tea." You know, and you know, the only place you slammed him was a little bit was at the end when you said, when you said, basically, go, "Hey, man, if you want to, go work out a bit." Go work oh, out a oh, yeah, show yeah, yeah. that's your point of view and see if you can fill up a room like yeah, this, yeah, like yeah. I did for six fucking shows. Yeah, go home, write it, write <laughs> I a show. I feel like I come on the microphone and I'll book you, motherfucker, yeah, if yeah. you'll do it. You know, it's like, yeah. but you, but yeah. it's like, yeah, you know, I mean, but you, you really did not. Thank you. Because I've seen the other. I've seen comics. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I've Get seen mean. a comic walk off stage and fucking cold cock a motherfucker. I know, but, man. I tell you, after you see thousands. <laughs> The shows but i just never i mean i'm literally grateful that everybody's coming to pay to see me but also like i just can't let anything get to me it's not my job to right. i'm there as a entertainer yeah and i'm going to entertain i'm going to deal with what happens and when that does happen i always do think of this as an opportunity right and i don't plan on what to say or whatever i just try to make it as real as i can for that moment right but it was electric you felt the audience go wow we did get to see something like yeah yes and they did get to see they were getting they expected to see something crazy, and they got to see something crazy. Yes, and and, and the goof is, we've done four sold out shows. That was the only moment. Yeah, yeah. That we, I mean, we didn't have. And I'm saying again, that first six months Trump was in office. I'm telling you right now, I had, I it must have happened to at least a dozen comics, and especially the celebrities. <laughs> I Any, hate to laugh, but that's anytime funny. they got Hilarious. near politics. 
people but would isn't scream. That the, I mean, cool. like like a chorus of people but would scream. But let me scream. tell you, when you get attacked, and like I've been attacked, like most comedians, well, I don't say most comedians, but like if they're not going against the grain, and I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of comedians doing great stuff out there, but like I've dealt with it for a long time now. I've had people yelling out, walking out, and crazy stuff. So I really don't, I mean, I'm prepared for it. And I don't plan exactly, but like, like I, it's not, I ain't new to this. So I just figure like, I just made the decision. I'm always going to go and, and have fun with it and like right. play, see where it goes. And also use it as, it's always an opportunity. When right. God, it's God like, throws you something, it's like, well, this is either, this is an opportunity. How do you deal with it? How are you going to deal with adversity? Exactly. There's a point where us as comics have to have our Doug Stanhope moment. <laughs> you Doug's, know, where yeah. you go. Doug Stanhope. I, I talk, love Doug Stanhope. Talk about a guy who can take, take control of a room. Absolutely. And, and a guy who can fucking completely walk a room and be unfazed by it. I, absolutely. I absolutely. Just, yeah. Stick to his guns, Doesn't give man. a shit that one they're my, getting <laughs> up tables at a yes, time. Leaving. One of my very good friends uh, or Hicks, said to me, or any of them guys. she's Canadian too. She said to me, I saw Norm MacDonald. I couldn't believe it. It was awful. And I walked out. And I said, well, you just uh, wasn't for you that night. But then she saw him a few years later. She said, and you know, to her credit, she said, I get it now. He's yeah. a genius. But he's not going to work too hard to come to you. Right. I mean, I learned from Robin Williams. And like, if I'm doing anything, I'm doing my impression of what I think he'd be doing. You know? And I loved him. I miss him. He died 10 years ago this week. That's awesome. Um but they, yeah, because that's what I got to do. You know, that's got to be my way in. And he would just perform the shit out of something. He said, well, I got to do that. So that's, but it's different though. Because I think I push to get the audience to come to me more out of my own insecure desperation. Or that's just my act. Um, but I really admire the guys that make them come to them. You know, it's like, I try to do a little bit of that where I can. Yeah. The first bit that I do is to make the audience just come to me very quietly. And then you build up this way. You have like a... You know, there are themes, and then there's, you know, I try to have themes during the show. Right. You get to this part, and then this part, and then that part. So it makes it more interesting for the audience instead of just telling the same kind of jokes. So you, you come to a different theme, and then a different theme, and then you introduce this thing, and you get to that. So it, that's that's really, um, you know, was just, you know, 35 years in, and you go, okay, that's working. Yeah. And there's no real pattern. What I like is that you can be so quiet with an audience when you're trying to make a point because that's the hardest thing for a comic to do yeah, well, is to have that yeah. audience be silent. And you have a lot of moments where they're fucking dead silent and they're hanging on every word you say. And to me, that's the scariest thing ever because, you you know, I'd be afraid I would lose them. Or when I do finally say something, they're not going to be there. And well, that's you the just dance. all this self-doubt. But Well, that's the dance. And I'm going to go, I really want to take it as far as I can take that. And so sometimes... I go for a couple minutes doing it. And truthfully, that's another thing. You just watch the greats and you learn to go as, as you know, you get what, <laughs> what, um, Monty Python, my, my, my buddy, John Cleese said, you take the, you know, see the structure of what they're doing and then nick that, nick the structure. And so when I saw in 2016, I saw Dave Chappelle, who's a lovely guy and, and, you know, the master of masters at, in this uh, art form. And I saw him and I realized there was two shows happening. There was a show of Dave's, he's doing on stage and then the audience's reaction to him and I went my god there's, I'm, I'm seeing two shows and then I realized what, what a lot of comedy can be and what I strive to do is what, what Dave does constantly consistently is try to make sense of the world for them they're looking at him like it's too crazy I don't get it anymore so you just come up with an interpretation that's fun that kind of helps demystify some of the crazy shit that's happening and luckily for comedy there's a lot of crazy shit yeah. it's been difficult to, to maneuver and you get attacked and blah 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 but I will say that like there ain't no easy ride and there ain't no easy trip if you're going to go after and do stuff, you know, but uh, th for me, I have to be like Dario Fo, the great uh, Italian absurdist um, writer and Nobel, uh, Nobel Prize winner for literature in, in 1997. Dario Fo said, with comedy, I can explore the profound. Yeah, absolutely. So you can come up, you can really get to an interesting idea. Yeah. You really and so it's been fun. And I'm pushing that as much as I can. And I don't know where it'll lead me, but the audience seemed to like it tonight. <laughs> they uh, they liked it all the shows, you know. It's it's been a, I mean, it's just been fun because yeah, I, I, I was so I I mean I was so excited 
about you coming. Thank you. Because you're a very handsome man. Thank you, sir. And, and look uh, at the suit. Look at that. <laughs> you didn't say anything about my suit, did you? Yeah. I well, did say something that. about you your suit about right off the, off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Um, you're a great man. Thank no, you. Thank man. But uh, it's just, you know, because I knew you were working on this new show, and I, and I was like, and I had no idea what it was, really. <laughs> I, I just heard a few things, this, that, and I, I go, you know, and I read a few things, but I go, well, I don't know, whatever the fuck that is. So let's yeah, wait yeah. and see what rob's gonna do and and it's just it's just uh boy I've, a, a just been great and and, and and you mentioned louis ck who was in here uh, about a year and yeah, a half ago I know why with a new show here. and and it was the same thing it was just a pleasure to watch you guys that are great masters Thank come you. in here and uh you know and michael you know you did you did i all did all right, right. <laughs> michael yeah. I mean, this guy they don't know him and he's murdering <laughs> he kids. it's the Dude. hardest spot in the world but i but, was dying back here uh, the second show. but like opening for you like because your fans are all just always cool they're very supportive they've always been cool and you're very ingratiating with the way you announce me as well but That's typically true. typically yeah. it yeah. would be thank you for mentioning <laughs> I had to finally work, i had to work it back into you being good <laughs> yeah but yeah because then they, 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 they think i'm your friend you know and we, we barely barely know each other but it's like you know they think i'm your friend so they give me you know because I've opened for famous people where that doesn't happen, and they're yeah. just like, "We could give a fuck about you. We want to see the guy, right? The guy right. who paid so the they're money nice, for but yeah, I, it's, it's needed, it and it's also you deserve it. You're a yeah. great comic. Well, thanks, man. Well, and I, th uh -huh. I, I really thought your style, your show. I mean, y'all picked so good, it for yeah. that reason. It, it complements what you're getting ready Absolutely, to do. Absolutely, because they know because you're so filthy <laughs> and awful and so misogynistic. I was, was kind of hoping this wouldn't like, come up. Well, like my God, they said the Rob's not going to be as. But horrible human being that guy is yeah. surely Rob will be nicer than that. so you set it up nicely yeah anything you say pales in comparison <laughs> to the horrible shit I said earlier no, man, but you I got, think you're a great joke I just love that you set I mean you know just the fact that you really set that up with women trimming their vaginas well it's come on let's not, so good keep for bringing all. up the it's good for all of shit it's i have it's good for all of us yeah like Let rob i'm also that. trying to help one of the biggest joke laughs i have ever had the pun i thought it was i had a punchline already he's got the punchline he came up with it the kayak one about the democrats that was mike merrifield that was one of the jokes that went like, when that gets applause every time, yeah. it's because of you. Yeah, there's times you've texted me, dude, the kayak line killed the man tonight. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, Because cool, I didn't have the kayak cool. thing. Because I was just talking about a real thing that happened. Right. Is that a Democrat or Republican boat? A Democrat, this is a Republican boat. But I didn't realize that Mike Merrifield would give me finally the gift of a <laughs> yeah. lifetime. Yeah, I said, well, why not? What, shouldn't the Democrat boat be a, a kayak? You know, because it's better <laughs> for the it's environment. Better, I'm telling you, they fall out. Because yeah. again, I'm telling a joke, and it, and it's I'm thinking I'm bringing peace, but again, I'm shitting on the other side. You know what else is good about a kayak? Flips. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but they totally relate to that. So it was good, man. It's a pleasure. But I, I tell you what, man, I feel like uh, for all the shit that I've went through this week, which is brutal, it was nice to just come and and like I swear to God, bathed in comedy heaven. Nice. And that was the place I needed. I swear, I'm not just saying this. I kept envisioning this back room and that audience. And I remember the piano, and I just like during all this time, as all this, all the pr negative press and all the shit that's happening this weekend, I went like, "It's all right, family loves you, and you're gonna be in McCurdy's this weekend. Oh man, and you're thank gonna you. be in that back room and just see yourself on the stage. And I used to see the piano because the piano was right there, but the set. I just remember that the set and people dying laughing. I went like, "Please bring me to that joy." So it's like, man, and it's been even better. Than I nice. imagine. So thank you. Hey, congrats on 37 years here. Thank you, my man. That's a wild success. Yeah, well, it's it's, you know, to Pam and I talk about to walk around this community that we just adore. Yeah, well, and, you've enriched this community. And but when people look at when people just see you, and they recognize you, and yeah. the first thing they do is giggle. Yeah, isn't that nice. It's you know that that is what th you are that's the, that's know, your man. legacy is is yeah. that people look at you and just giggle you know what they're giggling about something yeah. but isn't how, that a wonderful thing what a great way to go through life it could be more blessed like I, I never realized like the movies that I've made like what's happening it's been a weird thing where like you know 10 years ago it wasn't mm -hmm. but like the the people finally that that grew up and watched the, my movies when Adam Sandler's movies when I was the ones I did with them, and they they were kids and now they got kids yeah and I'm still around so when they see me at the airport 
Yeah. Like, ah! <laughs> yeah. No. Remember you. I knew you. Yeah. And you're the same size as when you're on the TV. So. I told Pam about your joke about your seven year old going, uh, Dad, I'm going to tell my kids about you. Oh, yeah. Can you write that down? That's true. She said that to me last week. And I'm going to tell my kids about you. I can imagine. That's I'm going to miss you. That's awesome, man. And she's. Um, it's beautiful. And I, I, there's nothing. Uh, the best got, time of my life right now. That's why, like, during all the stuff that happened, it really didn't get to me deeply because of, uh, you know, three, I really prayed. I did. I really prayed a lot. And I really did. I mean, I swear I did the rosary with my wife and I went. And it was, um, really helped me. Because, like, you know, and I was telling, like, Tucker Carlson this week, I was like, if you're good with God, they can... They can, you can get through anything. Absolutely. And then, Absolutely. Uh, and then you know, you're going to get to Mercury's in next few days. <laughs> Absolutely. But it's going to be two more shows tomorrow. And I, I wish I could have added two more. I will tell you, I'm exhausted. Because I, I try to give everything. I, like, that one was like, because it was so great. I didn't want to leave anything on the floor. Like, yeah, yeah get them on, you know. Like, yeah. yeah. And I just remember, like, when I was a kid, you watched Robin Williams just dripping with sweat. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit. Well, then you realize it was a lot of that was cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, for being honest. I know, you're right, you're right. Yeah. Had to, <laughs> had to, had to cut that shit out. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I know. But we didn't know then. No. I didn't know. We no. didn't know. We did the best we could. That's hey, right. uh, you know, that that's the thing, you know, that um for the drugs. You know, the the cocaine stuff, you know, we could hurt you or whatever, you lose a job or a marriage, or whatever. Now this stuff you die. Yeah. You're just gone. Fentanyl. Ugh, it's so, horrible. Horrible yeah, shit. No, I know. It's so bad. Horrible shit. But this was special, man. Thanks. Thing. And it got two. I don't know if we're gonna, tomorrow what's going to happen. We're going to have two. We're going to have two fun as fuck shows. Is what we're going to do. Yeah. I know it. I know we are. That second show. The first show was ridiculous. And then the second show was the second half of the first show, which is like, it was like an explosion. And the second half was perfection. It's just like, it can't get any better than this. So yeah. it can't. Yeah. We well. can't. We're doing it. We're building it. It's an uphill because you're getting, because each night, each show, you're getting more comfortable yeah. with what you're doing, which means you're, you know, you're getting looser with all of this every you know, it's, it's single funny. time, I feel, like, man. I feel like I want to go back to the Friday show. No, no, come back. You got to see it now. No, I got it now. No, 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 no I didn't have it. No, you got it. Yeah. You got to see it now. I'm going to open with a completely different four minutes tomorrow that yeah. you've never seen before. Let's do it. I'm doing it. Yeah. I'm going to look at some stuff tomorrow too. <laughs> but it's fun because there's some stuff, there's some stuff, there's a kind of a, a fuck you that isn't that, that, that show that to me is like the, um, it's like, uh, it's such a beautiful buildup that they really think I'm serious. And then I pull the wool out from, don't give it away, but the, the Nuremberg, not Nuremberg, Normandy. Sorry, Nuremberg. I'm so tired. Uh, that, the Normandy line. Uh, that, uh, Normandy uh, without a doubt, to me, of everything in the show, <laughs> that's the head turner. You know, yeah. they, without a doubt, that is the head turner <laughs> that you don't see coming. Yeah, you have a beautiful setup. The setup is so beautiful. You take your time with oh, yeah. it. Well, I was yeah. gonna say, you take a lot of time with Usually it. when you know you got a big punchline, a lot of comics you watch, they'll speed up the delivery. And this is what I'm saying about the silence and how you live in it. <laughs> you don't speed it up. You, you take you. your time slow because that's part, that's what delivers it. Right. It makes it I so right. I want to think I am absolutely serious yeah. this time yeah, like the average time, comic within 10 seconds would be doing the punchline and you know didn't the, want to win. I, I, I can say this is, <laughs> and I think this is very common everybody I think most people <laughs> who have grown up with a uh, uncle or a, a dad or a grandfather who yeah. was actually in a in war combat. in a war in combat yeah knows that they don't talk about it much absolutely that's, they just, fact, that's how the bit they was just written. Don't, and you you lead into that yeah, so well and to, it, to the point where it's like it's almost like this anticipation of when you go <laughs> he's gonna talk about it and you're like oh, fuck what's he gonna say yeah thank you man. well i remember like, the, the first time i watched you do it i was like where the fuck is this going like where, this better be going somewhere thank good you, and then it was it does you know? go somewhere but in good. my comic brain i'm like well what could it, what could he no, possibly I, be doing and yeah i just like the turns in before you get there but it's like oh yeah, like, god like it's the one time they think he's really gonna be serious it, i love that that's, and that's, i just that's, love the fact that it's the worst thing you could probably say it's great it's so yeah, classic awesome. classic misdirection <laughs> absolutely yeah, it's just a absolutely. fun you know like i don't know how much longer I'll, I'll be doing this but for the shows i mean i just you know made that the decision just like i'm just gonna 
pour it all out. Oh, just, good. Just because it's fun. I love it. And I really appreciate these people coming out. Oh. And, I, and I think also just because after the COVID, they've been stuck in their houses and stuff like that. So it means something for them to go out. Because they're not going to see movies or staying home to see movies. No. But stand-up comedy is the one art form right. that is at its peak. And you've never seen so many great comedians. There's always been great comedians. Yes. He's a great comic. You're a oh. great comic. But there's never been so many top notch comedians at their peak where they're able to have an outlet where they can get even better. And you got like guys performing, you know, whether it's Daniel Tosh, a great comedian, whether it's Sebastian Maniscalco, whether the greats like, you know, doing stadiums now, Bill Burr and Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock, you know, Sarah Silverman, you know, Whitney Cummings. You have like some top notch flight comics. And Adam Sandler, you know, these guys are doing stadiums, and it really is because it, it's the the art form has gone and raised and raised to what level is now, where it's it's become it's replaced pop culture. I mean, I'm sorry, it's re, 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 replaced in some ways pop or folk music, pop music. I think there is a, a singular um, experience that people are looking for. And during COVID, I had so many comics in conversation with me, going, "Is this it?" I mean, is this really feeling like yeah. this is it? The, the, our, our, we got to go sell real estate. I mean, this, this I was and, talking to Chris Rock and, about And that. I told him, I told him all I went, this ain't it, bros. No, I, I mean, him, it ain't it. People Chris, love this art Chris, Chris form. Rock. Love it. Yeah. Chris Rock was talking about that. We had a bunch of us guys on like Zoom, you know, and he's like, Tim Meadows is a great guy. And Adam Sandler was on. And, Tim's you know, been ben, here. Ben yeah. Stiller. And we were talking about. And Chris has been here. And James, uh. Uh, 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 Kevin James and we're saying you know we always said to ourselves you know one thing they can government Hollywood can do whatever the one thing they can never take away is our ability to do stand up comedy and they took it away <laughs> they took it away so it was like oh they can fucking take everything they can take everything they can fucking take everything well what happened to me like months into write that it down? is I don't want to talk about that you know for so many years my identity as a human being has been comedian at the yeah. end of the day you're still rob schneider but all i had was i'm a comic right so like six months into this i really feared and as much fear as they put out there about COVID, i really feared that it might never come back sure. i was one of those people and i'm like well after six months of not doing comedy like well, wait a minute if i'm not a comedian then who the who the fuck am i like right. if the thing that i've worked 30 years for just goes away right I like that's my identity, yeah. you know, and I and it really made me like I would have I, to look I felt inside. A hundred, I felt a hundred percent sure. I, I told everybody, I go, this is not ending this all. No, I know, but it, really it is broke not. My heart. It's, I, it's 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 a it's a it's this is hard, but we're gonna get past. I got it. angry. I got angry you know. because it wasn't just about stand up. Or comedy. It was about the restaurants being closed. It was about the schools being closed. Well, the, lunacy, going, the lunacy of it all. And then, like, and it really pissed me off. And my the only way I don't know how to fight back. The only thing I can do is make make fun of these people and make jokes about them and really piss off audiences all over the country in 2021. And it goes back to what you said so about living in America, rough. living in yeah. the USA. We're able to do that. We're not in China yeah. where we can't do it. We're not in a lot of other places. We were able to go. I'm mad. Yeah. I'm 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 network TV. I'm I'm mad as hell, and I'm yeah, I'm not gonna weird. take. It. I'm gonna say something. No, it's know? weird because when, it's when awesome. publicity when they try to like the New York Times and you know all these shitty, what used to be a great publication, but when they go after you to try to wipe you out, take you out, whatever, and they can't. Mm -mm. They try to take you down. They just, they can affect you getting on TV. They can affect your movies and stuff when they shit on you, call you COVID denier and shit like that. And it was bad in the beginning. I'm talking about March 2020. And like they went after me and Dr. Drew, you know, like front, sure. front page shit. You know. And you know what though? And it's tough, but we did, I didn't bend to it. I never yeah. apologized. I never, I just said, I know we're no, I think we're right about this. But the idea that you can't question something, sure. that dissension was no longer allowed, that, that people had turned out to be all correct. And this wasn't about being correct or what's the best evidence. It was just about like, We've already decided. So you decided. What about if new information comes? No, we don't. There won't be any new information. Anybody who brings it, we're gonna, you know, tarnish you. We're gonna ruin your career. We're gonna stop you if you're a scientist. We're gonna stop your funding. You know, I got to be such good friends with, and I just saw Dick Smothers. Uh, I loved it. Just recently, he, he lives. Just passed away. Oh, uh, Tommy did. Tommy, Tommy did. Away. And I, I got to be. Tommy. I got to be good friends with both of them. 
I and you know, these, I, these and I remind guys, people of what happened to the Smothers Brothers. They're the first brothers. canceled comedians. Yes. Well, truthfully, no. I mean, it was uh, Lenny Bruce. Lenny Bruce. But, 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 but I mean, but, literally. But I tell these young people, I go, can you imagine? Imagine this. The number one show on Let's television. See, yes. The number one rated show on television Take is off. taken off the air halfway in. Halfway in. Because halfway during an episode, uh, half well, no halfway, halfway into the, the, the third season, I think yeah. halfway into the third season. Truthfully, taking off the air, it's it's unimaginable. No, because yeah. that's what a great yeah, person. That. That's what such a yeah. great person, Tommy Smothers and oh. Dick Smothers was, because they had this thing and they had great writers, including um, Brooks, uh, which is Carl Reiner, uh, Steve Martin. No, but, yeah, yeah, but Brooks, uh, Albert name? Brooks, Albert Brooks, no, uh, Albert, but also uh, 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 Brooks, the the director. Um, uh, uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who did Mary Tyler Moore show? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, sh- what am I going to think of his name? Look it up. Uh, anyway, no, but the. But you know, I want to tell you this. Dick would tell me, he goes, every Mother, every like Monday, every Monday, they had to sit with the censors, right? Oh, yeah. And they the censors had the script and they handed it to them and it, they'd redlined and they'd go over with them every, everything that was redlined in the script from that week. You, you can't do and dick goes i knew what the show was gonna be next week because it was everything they redlined tommy was definitely oh, yeah, gonna that. do within two weeks yeah, for yeah. fucking sure well i love tommy you know, and tommy's one of those Tom guys that he amazing. paid a price for it he yes, paid he a did. price you know the thing about it is like amazing you know i know i mean i never had a number one show like that but you know if you go against the grain, it does it does cost you money. It's cost me money. Yeah. Um, and it, it wiped them out. But in the same way though, I mean I'm kind of excited, but I don't know what's gonna happen with me. But I, I feel like I'm just I'm just supercharged by it. You know? It's <clears throat> good. Yeah. Trust when when Louie came in here and did his thing. Don't and compare he, me to Louie. No, 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 I, I just never, Louis, I'm just, but I'm just saying I love Louis. He was just at that point, you know, coming back. Yeah. And I mean, just like you. He came in here and sold out six shows, bang, you know, and was like, ah, you know, if if all I do is I just do stand up from now on, that's okay. that's great, that's fine with me. And I go, are you fucking kidding me? I know. I said, look at guy, how many people. This is a guy who came out for you, for him. You Madison guys have Square a Garden. base of people that just love you guys. Louis C.K. can sell out Madison Square Garden and did, mm-hmm. and I don't know if he did two nights, but he could have. No, but he's one of the great masters of our age. And, and like, the idea that we're supposed to be perfect people. No. You know, and for the record, you know, and, and uh, you know, I, <laughs> I don't want to get into it, but, like, yeah, um, look, we've got to have some forgiveness and we have to have some, and I know a couple of the girls, the incident happened, and they, they're they're over it. They forgave him. You know, they just, they just were pissed off that that was used against them by they had their career threatened. You know, because of that incident, but they, they had nothing to do with it. Right. So just like, and that wasn't nice. So, um, you know, not by him. Right. He didn't do it. But like, you know, somebody that was working sure for him. Right. Or, I mean, like one of his manager group. Right. And that wasn't nice. So no. um, that, that um, but look, this is a, we have to have artists and they're going to be imperfect. Yeah. We have to let them, you know, do their yes, art. That's the way it works. Well, you the whole that? point of stand-up comedy, because I've heard a lot of it with the other job I do working at a record label. I've listened to like every different. Well, you know more, yeah. Every decade and how comedy has changed, and it's always been there as a way to take topics that scare America and yeah. make it more palatable. You know, the AIDS in the eighties. Um, just all throughout history, you know, I think of the the Rat Pack back in the day, the jokes they used to make about Sammy, the black jokes they made that by today's standard would be considered terrible, but they were trying to make it more palatable to America. Like, look, we can at least laugh about it. Well, then we can talk about the problem that I did. I did traditionally was the role of stand up comics. And now you say something as a comic and you ruin your career <laughs> when it's like, well, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. I watched some of that stuff and winced. Yeah. 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 Some of it's but brutal, dude. In some 1961. Of 1961. I'm not saying that was acceptable, but at least they were trying to laugh at this, you know, to because those those jokes weren't even allowed, you know, with someone that is of a different race with you at the same time on stage. But they were all laughing at it, and I remember yeah. specifically people did get mad at Sammy Davis Jr. But I feel like, you know, if there's some camaraderie and you don't take shit personally with your friends, 
you know, but it was at the same time, it was a very volatile thing. So you just kind of, well, if you're not in the era, you cannot judge from that era. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You don't know what it was oh, like yeah, for yeah, any yeah, of you those can't, people. You can't no judge clue. a different as but it, if was it, huge. Was today. it was huge for Absolutely. those guys to put their neck out for Absolutely. him because, you know, you've heard all the stories about him. He wasn't even allowed to stay at the same hotel with oh, them. Sure. And Sinatra would be like, well, I'm not doing my show then. If, mm-hmm. if Sam so, I mean, so, right. so it was at a time where they were like, at least if we can put it in front of America in a funny way, like maybe let's start talking Absolutely. about it now. Yeah. It's not yeah. as scary. And have some grace. Yeah. You know? You know, this is. This is a point where there, I that I generally end the podcast. Uh, it was going so good. I, it's going great. <laughs> once, and once y'all the can do it. Yeah, yeah. Couch I have to. Too much, it's, it's like over. either the podcast <laughs> ends or I am going to piss myself. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, yeah. Hey, I gotta say though, this was a nice, this was a nice kind of come down from like those shows are so like to me. I was, I'm so jacked. And up. I can go pee, and y'all can keep fucking. No, I'm, I got to go back. To okay. Okay. Hey, let me say, Rob, it's thanks, such buddy. a pleasure, man. Love thanks, you, buddy. Michael. Thank you, sir. No, this was. This is good, man. Let me. This is a good one. Oh, I it's think good, so. It's good to get people right after the show because they're like, yeah, I'm like electric. You know? Yes, it was awesome. That was fun. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, feel brother. free to cut me out of this altogether if, yeah, you, ha- exactly. if you have to. If it makes it flow Mike a little Merrifield. quicker, just I'm cut me out I'm not going to cut you out, but we're going to put a different face. That's true. Yeah. <laughs>